Hey guys, Rich Graham here, veteran Navy SEAL, Safari Land Cadre instructor, and the founder of Full Spectrum Wear. I wanna to talk to you guys today really quickly about muzzle discipline and proper weapons handling. Many of us think that we are exercising muzzle discipline and proper weapons handling by keeping our gun pointed downrange at all times when we're at the shooting range, right? And when we're on our weapon, it's facing downrange. When we're done with the drill, it comes to the ground, it goes on the table, it goes in our holster, and then we come back, right? So this is a, this is a very entry level positioning or um, experience for developing muzzle discipline and proper weapons handling, but this is never actually challenged really. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's nothing happening downrange that is challenging our ability to use our peripheral vision. There's nothing happening downrange that's making us work uh, proper weapons handling and manipulations, right? No trigger finger discipline of coming on and off the trigger as we manipulate the gun offline, then back on or low, high, whichever method we're using. This is just my approach. This is my opinion on it. And I believe that if you are already carrying a firearm, if you are working a firearm around your family, if you're carrying it in a vehicle, if it's a concealed carry and it's leaving your home, right, with you, then at any point in time, your proficiency and your ability could be challenged, but it's gonna be challenged under massive amounts of stress when you run into a real world situation and now it's time to perform. So if you've never challenged yourself in a 360 environment with moving uh, elements or things even downrange that you have to account for, then that's not really the time to test that proficiency that you've never actually even worked on. In my opinion, we should be developing our weapons handling skills and our ability to shoot accurate, right, and fast at the same time. These are two things that we can develop at the same time. And if we looked at this with a sports analogy like basketball, we don't go, hey man, once you can do 10 free throws in a row, then you can learn to dribble. Once you can hit five for five from the three point line, then you can learn to dribble, right? We learn to dribble and learn how to move on the court at the same time as we're developing our ability to shoot the ball. These are both important aspects of the sport, but they're two totally different skills. This is what I want us to start thinking about. This is what I challenge you to start thinking about. And you can do this depending on your shooting range and where you train. Maybe they don't let you do a lot of these drills that I'm gonna show you, but again, we can do it dry fire. I'm just gonna show you a dry fire element of this today. Although we're out on my range, which is a 360 range, I'm gonna keep this linear for today so that way you can try to replicate it. Like always, our first thing we're gonna do is get uh, good weapons handling if we're doing um, and good safety if we're going to do a dry fire drill then we want to make sure that in essence we are dry so the pistol is clear there's no rounds in the magazine we're in a position to do good dry fire training here again my mags are also empty so we don't have any live rounds on the range for my pistol here at this time so let's get into the first thing. The first thing that we're gonna focus on with this is my muzzle discipline starts as soon as I think about drawing my pistol from my holster. As soon as the thought comes in, here we have three people that are in close proximity. I have targets in the background. So as soon as I think of drawing, right, I have to identify my line and my line is where is the appropriate angle or where's the appropriate way to draw the pistol so that I'm not sweeping these people, right, as I'm moving in and coming onto target, right? This same concept could be, my line could be the line to the target, right? The line could be not sweeping the person who's right next to me if I were to draw. If I was surrounded by a bunch of people, the safest line, if there's people all the way around me, may simply be here and it pops up over the holster and it's down and it's in this position. This might be the only safe line I have. So the first thing is getting the weapon out and then my muzzle discipline doesn't stop until the weapon is actually back in the holster. I see this a lot where people are doing a shooting drill and they're here, bang, 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 bang. And then it's like, oh, and then they're here moving, right? And as soon as the drill's done, their brain just turns off and you see them turn on the range and everyone's like, whoa, 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 whoa. 
So what's happening is they're so focused on the drill, as soon as the drill, they're like, oh, brain dump, and they whoop, they start to move and they forgot all about their muzzle discipline and their weapons management, right? The very first thing and the very last thing is before the weapon even comes out of the holster, I'm looking and finding where is the line. Think of this like I have a laser on the end of the gun. And if you do practice some of this stuff at home and you have a laser, the laser's a really good indicator for following your muzzle discipline and seeing what your weapon's actually doing. So I find that opening and the weapon comes out in the safe line that allows me to navigate my way to the threat or navigate my way around the people that are surrounding me to get to the threat, right? Just depending if I have a clear line on target immediately or I have to work my way to the target, but I wanna get my gun out prior to having the line to the target to engage it, if that makes sense. Second topic we're gonna to talk about on this is moving offline or using muzzle discipline. So when we talk about muzzle discipline, that's I'm not gonna aim the gun at anything I don't intend to shoot. That's one of the fundamental principles of weapons handling and weapon safety. So I'm sure you've already heard about that. So we have a couple options here. Let's say this right here is my best friend, my wife, you know, another police officer, whoever this is in context to who it would be for you that's standing next to you. And I don't wanna point my gun right at them because one, it's not safe, two, it's just rude, right? But let's just say, um, for the skill set of it right now, because there's gonna be an argument that's gonna come back. And they go, Rich, if orange out there is really a, a threat, then if I'm here in this position, I'm gonna tell yellow, get out of the way, get out of the way, and I'm gonna keep my gun up to orange. And maybe in the reality of the context of it, that's what you do. But if that's what I'm planning on, I never developed a skill, I never developed my peripheral vision to see the court right, to see the field and all the things and all the moving parts. So for right now, this is what I want us to start doing. If I'm looking to the orange target and I'm on the left side, cause that's my clear line and I come onto orange and for whatever reason, I'm going to move. And in this case, I'm going to move because the yellow can't move and the yellow can't move cause obviously it's a piece of steel on a wooden stick. So I'm gonna do the movement because the targets can't move right now, right? So this isn't necessarily a tactic. This isn't how I say this is how we're gonna work the fight, right? This is just more of getting repetitions in and working the movement so that we can develop our skill. In this, I'm on the left side of yellow. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to the right side, but I don't wanna sweep yellow as I do so. So I have two options for this. I can come low and come underneath yellow and come back in, or I can go over and then come back in, right? Both are equally right. I'm not gonna say one's right or wrong. Maybe you're uh, used to using a high ready technique. Maybe you're not, maybe you only use low. Either way, the one that doesn't work here is a center ready. So there's a lot of people using a technique for moving through their home and clearing buildings and stuff like this where they're using a center ready. We just have to be very careful with the center ready because unless you have very, very good weapons handling skills, the reaction time is too short, right? For you to be able to work that muzzle discipline in many cases, this is a technique that would be used in a tactical uh, train or like a team movement where you have one guy who's in the very front and he can utilize that technique because there's no one else in front of him. But even with that being said, it's still a questionable position because if you haven't developed the skill yet, what is your reactionary time and what is your muzzle looking at in relation to what your eyes are? So if my weapon is up, it's up and I can move 360. I'm turning and I'm not sweeping the cameraman in this, right? So that's fine. If I'm down, I'm down, right? But I can't do that same technique center ready because I'm gonna sweep you guys as I do so. Does that make sense? Another thing to consider with this if I just look right here real quick, when our kids get scared, where do they run to? They usually run to us. So if I have someone who's shorter than me and I'm doing that center ready and I'm looking, right, I might scan past my kids and not actually see them underneath my line of sight, right, under pressure, under stress, and I might be waving my pistol right in front of their face, right, or if they're even a little shorter, right, if I'm doing that center ready. So I wanna go low, or I wanna go high. 
This is going to be safer, right? And there's a certain time and place to use a center ready when we're working muzzle discipline in a 360 environment. In most situations, it's a dangerous position to do, and it takes a lot more training and a lot more repetitions and time in to, to work that position. So for the time being right now, if you're new to working in a 360 environment, you're new to working muzzle discipline, I'd kind of leave that one on the back burner for now. And let's focus on the high ready or the low ready or the high port and the low port. All right, so now let's talk about what is the difference between a high port, high ready, low port, low ready. So let's start with the low since it's probably more familiar with you. So we have a low port, which means the weapon is down. Dynamic situation, there's a lot of times we do a low port. You see people doing a low port like this. Me personally, I don't care for this position necessarily in a dynamic situation because I don't feel like I'm in a position where I'm really ready to fight. My wrist is not in a position. My grip is compromised from the bend of my wrist. And <clears throat> this, this position here for me, uh, although it's a very popular position, I prefer to do a low where I'm keeping the weapon straight. And it's almost gonna be like I just came out of my holster and I'm in this position. I'll, so this would be a low port, the weapon's down. And when I go to come up from this position, it's like I just came out of my holster, right? So this is a little bit stronger wrist position in my opinion, right? The other one is a low ready. Well, low ready is more if I'm on target and I come down just a little bit here. So the weapon is extended out. I'm looking over top of the weapon, whether it's my pistol or the rifle, and I'm here and I'm scanning and I come back and I'm ready to come back in. It's a very short movement. If I were to do this and come across, I'm sweeping the people in front of me. So I may have to come to a low port, right? Or a low port to clear these people to then come back up on target. <clears throat> the high port and the high ready would be like this. High port would be up, right? I'm here, maybe this hand comes across, but the weapon is off to the side of my head and I'm looking through here. This is not necessarily a good fighting position. This is just a safe position, the gun straight up. Some people refer to this uh, similar position as a temple index. I don't care for the temple index. I'm not saying it's wrong, but one of the things we have to be very careful with is when I move my body, people tend to bring the weapon with them. So if I change the angle of my body, I change the angle of the gun. So up is up and down is down. I know that sounds really simple and stupid, but trust me, You'll remember that up is up and down is down. So we're coming from the high port, right? And now we're gonna go to a high ready. The high ready is gonna position right underneath my eye line, just offset. And I don't wanna get into too much detail for this right now, but basically I'm looking just over top of the weapon. And now as I present onto target, I'm sliding out and then I'm coming back. I'm sliding out, I'm tracking that front sight post right into the target, right? And when I come into this position, my angle here between the, from the elbow with this, and then the angle of my, of my shoulder where the elbow is in relation from my shoulder movement will determine the angle of the barrel. We wanna be very careful with this when you transition from doing the sewel position all the time, right? And now you go to do a high port or a high ready. Sometimes what's happened with this elbow out to the side like this, you do your high ready like this and now you're pointing the gun sideways. So this elbow has to come down. But just like the temple index, of pinning the gun to my head will change the angle of the weapon. If I pin my elbows to my body, then the same thing happens and it's equally as bad. When I move my body, the gun moves with it. So elbows out, I should be able to move like a gimbal. My body should be able to do whatever my body's gonna do. And this just stays here, whether it's up or down, same thing. So I'm not saying the low is bad or the high is bad, right? Or the low is better, the high is better. It's just, it's based on context of the situation. All right guys, so now let's just look at this one more way, right? We can come here and I'm just gonna put these in a file, all right? So this one has a little more movement. Maybe your range lets you do this, maybe they don't. Um, so again, you can do this dry fire and I'm just gonna come here and do a line drill. So very simply what I'm gonna do is let's say orange is my target. And in the previous videos, we talked about the tank turret. My hips move and my feet walk the direction I wanna go, right? Meanwhile, my upper body stays locked on the target. So in this, my target's gonna be orange. Right now, I'm not in a position to get on target because all these people are in my way. If I just look at this from where I'm standing right now, it's gonna take me more steps to get a clear line 
going to my left, although this is a better position for a lefty to shoot from, because uh, going across my chest than out, but this is a shorter line for me to get my weapon out onto orange. So in this case, what I'll do is I'll do the first one, we'll work a high. So I turn my feet the direction I wanna go, I'm coming into my pistol, I come out, I'm on orange, bang, 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 maybe you do it stationary, maybe we walk, I come across, in my peripheral vision, I see yellow creeping in, right? And I also see blue. So now what I'm gonna do, finger comes off the trigger, come into that high, get out of the way, get out of the way, right? I'm back on, I'm coming forward, right? Finger off the trigger, I'm coming across, right? Back on, maybe I walk around this guy and I'm turning my hips the direction I wanna go. From here, I come across, I see him in my peripheral vision and come back in, I'm backing up, backing up. I see this guy in my peripheral vision, I come across, right? And for right now, maybe the argument is that Rich, we shouldn't walk backwards, right? But I'm just getting reps and starting my movement, starting to learn, right? To see the people as I'm doing this, right? But while I'm doing this, what I want you to understand, if you're watching my eyes, my eyes are staying locked on the orange target. As I'm going and I'm here, so I'm just gonna do this with a finger gun. So I'm not pointing the, even though it's clear and safe, right? So as I'm on the orange, I'm here and as pink comes in, I see pink in my peripheral vision for the training purposes of building our muzzle discipline and building in that peripheral vision training, right? I come in, come off, I'm still looking at orange, I don't look at pink. I come in, once all are clear, I come back onto target right? I keep my eye on orange and I'm back in. I keep my eye on orange and I'm back in. I don't look at blue. I don't look at yellow. I don't look at, the, I don't look at these targets. My focus stays downrange. I need to train my peripheral vision, right? To see what's happening in front of me and work that. So again, this is, we're building, um, we're building a, a capability. This isn't necessarily how I would fight but it's a drill. So hopefully that helps. Give it a shot, try it out. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Again, my name is Rich Graham, veteran Navy SEAL, Safari Land Cadre, and the founder of Full Spectrum Warrior.